it's hard to uh yeah. Okay. First says, find the vertex axis of symmetry and direction of opening in the manner of your choice. So however you want to do this, we're going to find the vertex axis of symmetry and direction of opening. All right, you guys know how to do this. How do we find our vertex axis of symmetry and direction of opening? What? Direction is up for this one, yep. And also up for this one. How do we make it down? We have to have a negative out here in front, right? That's it. Simple as that. All right, what about, let's go back to problem one here. What about the vertex and axis of symmetry? We gotta find X. We gotta find X. And we find x by using our little formula, x, which is x equals negative b over 2a. So for this problem, this is going to be my axis of symmetry, x equals <coughs> negative b will be 4. What's 2 times a half? on the test just like this. So here we go. Easy points. How do we find our axis of symmetry? X equals negative 12 over 2. So negative 6. And our vertex then is negative 6. Plugging that in, double check, see if you get negative 40. Yes. And those problems are done. Now, on the other two practice tests, one of these equations looked different. It looked, one of them looked like this and one of them looked like this. You're gonna do them exactly the same way, right? But what do you have to be careful of? There's some missing, right? So in this problem, what would your A be? Three. Three. What would your B be? Six. Six, good, good. But in this problem, what would your A be? Three. Three. What would your B be? Zero. Zero. Because in a quadratic, this is your A term, this is your B term, and this is your C term, right? So it's possible that one of those will be missing. You gotta pay attention which one is missing. All right, here we go, part two. Which are polynomials? If not, why not? So again, just like every time we've done this, if it's a yes, you just write yes. But if it's a no, you have to tell what's wrong with it. So what about A? No, because X in the denominator, variable in the denominator. How about B? No. Y? Negative exponent. That's a no-no. 
What about C? Yep. C's okay. What about D? Yep. D is fine. Would everyone agree it's fine? Okay. And then how about E? Nope, because there is an X under the radical. radical. Everybody okay with that question? Easy points there. Oh boy. All right, three, cross off. That's the one we didn't cover and won't cover. Not responsible for three, cross that off. We had one on every practice test, right? Crossing it off. Number four. Write the equation of the linear function. Uh oh. Linear. What is that triggering my brain? Slope. So, what are my points in number four? One, three. One, three, and two, nine. Two, nine. Everybody got that? You see the word linear, you know you need slope. So, slope is. 9 minus 3 over 2 minus 1. Lincoln, you okay back there? Well, I got 6 over 1 or 6. How about you? Yeah. What's the next step? That's good for half credit. But now you need to write the equation of the line, right? So pick a point. I always use that one. I think I'll use this one this time just because. Does it matter? Nope, it's random choice. I'm just picking one. So y minus 9 equals 6. x minus 2. That's called the point and slope form. We practiced it over and over again since you were freshmen. So y minus 9 equals 6x minus 12. I'm going to distribute and then add 9. So it looks like my y, or my f of x, if I'm using function notation, is going to equal 6x minus 3. Anybody have a question about where one of my numbers came from? of the quadratic function where the vertex, or this is a quadratic function. So I have two points again, just like I did over there, but I am not going to do slope. When do I do slope? When it says linear, line. Right, this is a tough one. You really have to study to get this. You have to remember, what is my equation going to look like? Y equals, make it up over here, Y equals, they look something like this. Y equals what? Some number. You guys are just building the equation, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. X actually, it'll be plus one because I'm putting it in parentheses. Yep. And what always happens when I either go in or come out of parentheses my sign changes, right? And now on the end, I'm going to put a plus two because that point is left one and up two. Left one, up two. That is the setup for the equation. Again, I know th this one, this is the problem you really have to study because you got to know how to set it up. Yours is negative 1, negative 2. Oh. Well, I copied it down wrong. So it would be minus 2. Those of you that have said minus 2, you are right. All right. Now, what? How do I finish? find n. What do I have to do to find that missing number? Plug in the other point. When you get
build your equation, you use these numbers. But to find your n, you use the other numbers. So 3 equals n times 2 plus 1 squared minus 2. This is x. This is y. All right, here we go. 2 plus 1 is... Three, three and three squared is nine. nine. So this is nine times n. N times nine. Nine times n minus two. The nine and the two don't combine because that nine is hooked to an n. Nine n. Then we will solve. So we'll add the two. And what do I put in the answer blank? Y equals 5 nine. This equation right here with 5 ninths put in, yep. that is my answer. <laughs> Most of you got this down but you have to get started. So you need to practice so you know how to start each problem. <laughs> this one is kind of a tough one to get started. All right, number six. All right, I'm gonna write an equation. So I'm basically kind of doing what I just did, only this time I'm going to have parentheses and I have three parentheses. Look at your picture. How do I know there are going to be three parentheses? Because there's three x-intercepts. So what's going to go in the parentheses? x plus 2 x plus 1 x minus 2 Right? Now, look at the picture. We have to be on the alert for bouncing. So do we have any bouncing in the picture? Yes. Where? Negative one. At this factor right here? Yes. So we're going to put a squared on that factor. Everybody with us? Now, the only thing missing, I'm done, I'm done, except for that. So how am I going to find that? Put in point. I'm going to take that other point, this random point, and I'm going to put in one for the x's and two for the y's. six when I did my arithmetic. Did I make it another mistake? You okay with that? So again, what goes in the answer blank? That right there, only this is a negative one six. Miss Borg? Yep. Don't you divide the negative twelve? Oh, you did? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, I got negative one six when I reduced it. All right, we good? All right, now we have our balls of the ground problem. And we've done enough of these 
that hopefully as we read the problem, get my equation up here. As we read the problem, the key word we see in there is maximum. And we recognize that this is a parabola opening down. So maximum is just asking me for my vertex. Mm -hmm. And how do I find vertex? It was the first problem we did today. Negative, negative v over 2a. So negative v over 2a. Negative 48 over negative 32, which does reduce. If you type it in on your calculator, you get 1.5. Three halves, 1.5. So that is the x coordinate of my vertex. Right? How do I find the y? Plug it in. I'm going to have negative 16, and you can do 1.5 or 3 halves. I'm going to do it without a calculator, so I'm going to do 3 halves. But you can do 1.5 on your calculator if you want. sure I have units on this stuff. So what does the 1.5 represent? Always, always, always in these projectile motion problems, what does the x represent? Time. Time. So this is 1.5 seconds and 38 feet. So if the question says, when does it reach its maximum? 1.5 seconds. What is the maximum? 38 feet. I think this particular question asks for both. So 1.5 seconds and 38 feet. Is everyone okay with that? Okay, now we're going to do a synthetic division problem. What's going to go in the box? One. Positive one. Positive one. What's going to go across the top? Guys, you know I'm going to try to trick you, so keep your medial your eyes open. Two. What goes across here? Two, Two. Negative, eight. Eight. negative eight, negative Zero. eight, negative eight. Zero. 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 Nine. 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 Negative two. Because what's missing? X squared. X squared. So where the X squared should go, I'm going to put in a zero. Okay? Now, this number comes straight down. Straight down, drop it down. One times two, write it here, add. One times negative six, write it here, add. One times negative six, write it here, add, and add. How did I do with my arithmetic, is it right? So now I have to fill in the blanks. What is the quotient? Two x to the what? Q. Q. Why is it Q? Because the original was four, and you always come down one. Minus six x squared, minus six x, plus three. This right here is my quotient. What's that number on the end? Remainder. That's my remainder. I'm just going to put 1, but you could put 1 over x minus 1 if you want to. That's totally fine. Are we okay with synthetic division? Mm -hmm. Good, because we need it in some of our problems, don't we? All right, let's move on. 
consider this, list the possible rational roots, and then find the roots. All right, what are my PRRs? Possible rational roots, here we go. Factors of negative two, so that's plus or minus two and one over factors of one. So basically you only have four numbers to guess, right? So maybe you'll get lucky right off the bat, but at worst you're going to have four guesses. One, negative one, two, negative two. Everybody got this? It says find the roots. Guess. What are you going to guess? Two. Two. Our synthetic division. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. Here we go. You got it. How do we know when we found a root? We get a zero. So one of my roots is two. That is one of my answers. Right there, two. Now, where do I go here? from here? We know, come on guys, you're going to test, let's go, what do we do? So we look at what's left, which is x squared plus 9x plus 1. And I would love to factor that person, but I don't think it's going to work. So this happened to me yesterday and the day before. What happens? Quadratic formula. Remember, I promised you you're going to have a quadratic formula problem. Negative B. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. What's underneath that radical? Oh, is that 77? Two. Yeah. You know that number makes me happy because that's the year I graduated from high school. <laughs> Later on, he says, oh my gosh. <laughs> that's right, honey. I'm old. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> negative 9 plus or minus 277 <laughs> over 2. And what about, what about root 77? It does not break down so guess what we're done we're done so one of our answers is two and the other ones are down okay all right number 10 if x plus 2 is one factor Find the other ones. All right? Who remembers? This is another one where it's so easy, but you got to remember how to get started. What? We divide. And what do we divide by? What's going to go in the box? Negative 2. Negative 2. And across here is going to go 1, 12, 41, 42. guess this number. They told us, right? They told us that was going to work. How do I find the other factors? That is what I still need to do. Take what's left, just like this one over here. Take what's left, which is x squared plus 10x plus 21, and factor it. How does that factor? Plus 3, plus 7? 
there's the answer to the question. It said find the other factors. So recap, we divided out the one they gave us, right? We divided out the one they gave us and factored what was left. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right, number 11. Volume varies inversely as pressure. Is that going to be V equals KP or V equals K over P? K over. Boys and girls, that, that, those are your only options, okay? It's always going to be A equals um, KB. or A equals K over P. Whatever your two things are, in this case it's volume and pressure, you're either gonna have the first one equals K times the second one, or the first one equals K divided by the second one. Step one, sentence one. All right, sentence two. If the pressure is 12, the volume is five. So there's my formula. I'm plugging in 12 for pressure and five for volume. So what is K? 60. <laughs> Sentence three. Find the pressure when the volume is 16. <clears throat> Go back to step one, volume is 16, K is 60, find P. I'm plugging and chugging, that's all. Now when you solve this, use your head. You know how to do this. Can't deal with the denominator, multiply it over here, and then divide by so what does P equal? I don't know. 15 over 4. Which if you type that in on your calculator would be 3.75 I think. Which would be fine. Alright. How are we doing this problem then? We are going to one sentence at a time. The first sentence always is my formula. The second sentence, I plug in some stuff and find K. And then the third sentence, I plug in some stuff and find my answer. All right, number 12. What are our PRRs for number 12? Close to margin. Plus or minus 842 and 1 over 1. Remember, those can be in any order. Factors of 8 over factors of 1. Find the factors and sketch. Okay, so what do you want to do? What do we do to get this started? Yes, two is an option. Two almost always works for us. Let's try two. So I'm going to divide two in. Oh my gosh. Please don't think two always works, but it seems to for us. So what does that mean? In terms of my sketch, one of my points is at Two? Mm -hmm. I'm going to label that point like I label all my points. 
All right, and now for the third time in a row, what do I do? Where do I go from here? Take what's left, which is x squared minus 3x minus 4, and try to factor it. How does it factor? X minus 4 plus 1. Which means what in terms of the graph? We have a dot or an x-intercept at negative 1 and positive 4. Now, I always do this. I get a hold of my, or ahead of myself. Part B said find the factors. Factors are these, okay? There's supposed to be three of them. These are the two that we got from that. What's the third factor going to be? X minus two. The third one came from the number that we guessed. Look, if there's a dot here, doesn't that mean there's a factor at X minus two? So these are the answers to part B. Those are the factors. Now, part C is the picture. Where do I start? I gotta connect all these dots. Where do I start? Start down. Down. Because it's a cube. There's no bouncing, right? How do I know? How do I know there's no bouncing? No squares on my polynomial. Anybody have a question about any of those steps? So now we're going to sketch this guy. It's already factored, so I'm just going to sketch it. So Cliff, what do I do first? Where do I start this picture? Well, now wait. I gotta put some. I gotta put some points on my picture. Let's start with that. Where will the points go? I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Positive two. I'm gonna have one at positive two, and another one at negative one. Good. So start with your x-intercepts. Now. this problem have? Four. Four. Four is even. Even starts uh, up. But we, have a but we have a negative in front of it, so it's going to start yeah. down. All right, let's back up and make sure everybody's on board. We have four x's in that problem. Four is an even number. Evens are up, up. That's how evens act. But when you stick a negative in front, we know that tips us upside down. So instead of starting up, it's going to start down. down. So it starts down here. When it hits that dot, what does it do? It bounces. It bounces because that dot came from that factor, which has a squared, so it bounces and connects to the next dot. What does it do when it hits that dot? It bounces. it bounces again, and that makes perfectly good sense because didn't we say it was gonna be down, down? Now, one thing I've noticed in your homeworks, I've got a few things on that, is that sometimes you're getting carried away and you're, for whatever reason, you're, you're crossing your x-axis. Kids, these are the only two places you can cross the x-axis, all right? So don't, don't cross anywhere else. That's it, those are the only two places. The dots you put on the x-axis are your x-intercepts. 
All right, number 14, factor and sketch. Whoa, that's the last one. Number 14, factor and sketch. Anybody notice anything about this problem? You can group it if you want to, all right? If I don't tell you to list the PRRs, then you will always be able to factor it, okay? Could I do my guess and check? Yeah. Sure, I could, but that usually takes longer, not always, but usually. So I think I'll go ahead and factor my grouping. I'll take out an X squared, and I'll take out a negative four, This is another one of those places where some of us are screwing up. Everybody look at me. My common factor is x plus two. I write it down one time. I don't square it. I don't write it here and here. I write it one time. And then I write the leftovers. Now, what do I notice about my leftovers? they factor into x plus 2, x minus 2. And then I got to be aware, what do I notice here? I got two of the same. So that's going to be an x plus 2 squared. That's these two. And then my x minus 2. So in terms of graphing it, I have an x-intercept at negative 2 and an x-intercept at positive 2. Starts down. Starts down because there's three x's. Now, what does it do when it hits that x-intercept right there? It bounces. It bounces because that dot came from this parentheses. So it bounces down and connects. What does it do when it hits that one? It, goes it just goes through. Because that one doesn't have a screw. All right. Let me hand back some papers that I've got. I don't have very many for you, but I've got a few. Let me hand this back. And then I'll answer whatever questions you have. Friday is a long way away. If anybody wants to stay after school today and take the test, I'm fine with that. You can stay after school Thursday and take it, or you can take it Friday and Friday. That's a few, it's a long time away. No, not right now. What's the matter? Hang on. Yep. Well, where's the home? Oh, we don't have to. We haven't started to go this You gotta push it in. Uh, yeah. You don't see them? You missed the hole. It's right here. One, two. One of the things oh. <laughs> that's happening oh, boy. Um, a lot oh, boy. is we're not labeling our points. So we need to make sure that we are labeling our points when we are graphing. We don't want to lose points for something like that. All right, does anyone have any particular kind of problem that we need to practice? Any particular kind of problem? Um, We're all going to get A pluses. Uh, oh Lord, that would make me so happy. So, Pam wants to do a variation problem. So, I'll just make one up. 
I'll say bananas, very directly, as grapes. Okay, so I'm totally making this up. All right, it's a nonsense problem, but we're going to do it mathematically. So bananas, very directly, as grapes. When bananas are 10, grapes are 25. Find grapes when bananas are 16. All right, there's our, there's our problem. Okay, so my things are not pressure and volume, or temperature and pressure, or whatever. My things are bananas, my equation is either going to be B equals KG or B equals K over G. Does everyone understand that? So which one is it in this problem? It's the top one because we have a direct variation. All right, so there is sentence one. I got my formula. Now, what does sentence two say? When bananas are 10, grapes are 25. When bananas are 10, so go 10 here and 25 here. So then K equals 10 over 25, which reduces to two fifths or 0.4 if you're doing it on your calculator. All right? Cam, are you watching? I'm doing this for you. All right, so that's, that's step two. Now, what's step three? Go back to your equation. Find grapes when bananas are 16. So 16 bananas, 16, equal two-fifths or 0.4 times G. So 16 divided by 0.4 is 40. So when I solve that equation, I get G equals 40. If this had been varies inversely, I would have done exactly the same thing, but I would have used that formula. All right, who else? Anything else we need to do? Number five. The quadratic. Uh, Practice test three, number five. So we're going to write a quadratic function. So that word quadratic immediately tells me I'm not using slope. The vertex is negative 3, negative 2, and it contains the point 1, 7. All right. How do I start? We start with our vertex. And we start with y equals, because we're writing an equation, a number, parentheses, x plus 3 squared, quadratic, got to have a squared, and then minus 2. So step one is you got to write your equation incorporating your vertex. It's a parabola. Got to have a squared. And we know it's vertex. All right, we're all done except for n. And to get in, we'll put seven in here and one in here. And then we'll do our arithmetic, PEMDAS. So one plus three is four squared is 16. 16 times n 
Don't combine the 16 and the 2. 16 and minus 2. All right. And then we add our 2 over and divide. And then we remember the last step in the answer blank goes this right here with 9, 6, My job is to write the equation of that picture. How do I start? Y equals n. Well, I don't know what n is. I'm going to have an n there for sure, just Three. like I did over there. 3x. I'm going to have an x plus 3. And x minus 0. minus 2. Alright, so let's stop here, make sure there's no confusion. I wrote x minus 0. Could I have written x plus 0? Yeah, because with 0, it doesn't matter. Could I have left the 0 off totally and just wrote x? Just written x? Yeah. So don't be confused by that. It can be a plain x, it can be an x plus 0, or an x minus 0. Anytime you have a dot at the origin. Now, before I go any farther, I got to pay attention to whether I have any squares. No squared here. Whoops, I got one there. No squared there. Does everyone understand why there's a squared on that parentheses? Now I'm ready to plug in 1 for y and 1 for x. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.